All right, let me show you what I've been working with here. Uh, these are the jaws that came with this uh, particular vise. They're steel. Um, you can replace them with these screws. And I did make myself a set of um, jaws out of cutting board material, like a kitchen cutting board. And uh, the problem with that is it still leaves marks and stuff on your wood, on your softer wood. So I've been working with layers and layers of duct tape over that, and it's been working pretty well. But um, I'd like to see if I can't do something a little bit better than that. So I guess the best place to start is with these existing jaws. I'd like to put the steel ones back on the vise because I use that for other things the most but I want something that I can kind of change out really quickly. And so my thought is I will probably take a piece of poplar here, wrap it in leather, and then insert these magnets into it like so, so that I could just stick it onto my vise when I need it. I think that'll probably be the quickest and easiest thing. So let's just start there. But just kind of a quick sketch of what I'm thinking is in section, I'll have my steel jaw vise right here, right? And then I want my magnet to line up with that and I'll have my wood like that. And then I'm gonna wanna wrap that with leather. So I think I could route a little groove in it so that my leather could wrap like that. I think I'm going to start with that and we'll see how it goes. Subject to change, but that's kind of the general idea. How wide is that? Five inches, which is about what I've got here. Yeah, perfect. Let's go an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter tall. Let's cut our wood where we need to cut it. All right, next let's figure out where we're gonna put our magnets. Now these magnets are 11 sixteenths of an inch. Why don't we just say three quarter? We'll uh, make the holes slightly bigger, three quarter of an inch. Let's score a center line. If we put one here, I want the other one more like, more like there. So let's just come in five eighths of an inch. We decided our magnet was about a three quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna use a three quarter inch Forstner bit. Now the other consideration is the, the depth that we wanna go. Now these magnets are Basically, three sixteenths inch deep. First off, let's make that three eighths of an inch tall. There, three eighths, three eighths to the center line. Okay, so now you can see what we've got there. That way we can wrap our leather around um, all the way and have a neat edge on it. I think it's worth taking a second here to figure out 
how big of a piece of leather we need for each of these. So we need a piece that comes out and then wraps around like that, down and like that. So we need three eighths. Okay, so it comes out three eighths and it goes over three eighths. And then it goes about an inch and a quarter. And then three eighths and three eighths. So two and three quarters of an inch by five inches, of course, for the length. Got myself a scrap of leather here from some other project. Really roughly, this is going to be like eh, like that. But we're going to have to wet the leather so that we can get it wrapped completely around, and then we'll uh, we'll get it to fit. But I think that's long enough. Now, if you've never worked with leather before, basically what this does is it softens the leather and makes it more pliable and stretchy. And then as it dries, it's going to contract a little bit and it will uh, tighten up and it'll hold the shape that you've put it in. All right, to get these to mold the way we want, we're going to clamp those two together first. back with some blocks here and clamp those from the sides. All right, there's really nothing to do at this point but wait for the leather to dry. I think this has had plenty of time to dry. Let's uh, open it up and see what we got here. I was thinking about epoxying that in, but it's actually stuck on there really well, so I don't think I'm gonna have to do anything. I think it'll just stay there pretty good. But I will go ahead and epoxy in the magnets here. 
We'll go ahead and use some of this 30 minute epoxy. Um, I find it to be pretty strong for applications like this. Let's install these. Wow, I think that holds it very well. It doesn't look like it's denting the wood in any way. Nice. And then if you want to switch back to just using the steel, you just pop those off of there. Easy peasy. Doesn't get much easier than that. I can say that that gives a superior grip to the duct tape that I had on there. I mean, it is not moving and I'm putting an awful lot more force on it than I normally would for sanding. It just has a better grip to it. That, that duct tape is a little bit slick and so this can kind of slip up and down if you don't grip it hard enough. So I'm very pleased with that. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.